Our generosity is not so much about us impoverishing ourselves to give to God as if he needs anything. He doesn't need anything. It's the privilege in sharing with the generous God that always outgives. Generosity promotes joy as grace is multiplied. Back in 1 Chronicles 29, key verse here in verse 9. Hopefully you can see it if you're able or willing to turn back there. 1 Chronicles 29, 9 puts a number of really important concepts together uh, that kind of tell the whole story of how joy is cultivated through our generosity. 1 Chronicles 29.9 it teaches us that generosity promotes joy as grace is multiplied in an environment of our offerings. 1 Chronicles 29.9, let's reread it. It says, Then the people rejoiced because they had given willingly, for with a whole heart they had offered freely to the Lord. David, the king, also rejoiced greatly. Here in this uh, verse, there are three themes of this chapter that are all put together in, a, in beautiful harmony. There's the whole notion of, of these believers' whole hearts, the, the totality of their uh, interest and mind and, and consideration. In some cases, we've heard in a few cases, why are there six weeks of the worship campaign? Why are we having all these rallies and meetings and that kind of thing? You know why? Because God is vying for your whole heart. And it takes more than a, a reminder or two to get through some of the outer shells. Amen? You with me on that? Or am I the only one that needs uh, uh, a few reminders and encouragements? Why? Whole heart. The entire system. And some people are ready to give their time. Uh, but less inclined here and here. Some people are ready to give their money, but less inclined here and here. God is looking for whole hearts offered to him. And whole hearts that do what? That offer freely. That offer willingly. That just spring forth in a spirit of joy. That's what Paul says in Second Corinthians 9. God loves a cheerful giver. By the way, as we approach uh, uh, giving Sunday in two Sundays, I'll say this. God blesses us with visitors in every service every week. And some of you are visiting here today. I'm so grateful that you're here. We're just honored by your presence, and it's special to have you with us. Visitors make our Sundays even more special than they already are. We're thankful that you're here. We would never want any visitor in any way to feel any obligation to give. What's beautiful about these gifts is they're intrinsically motivated, not extrinsically motivated. There's no compulsion. There's no ought. There's no like, well, you, and you should give and you should give. There's no like structure or standard. There, there's simply just uh, this idea of when our whole hearts are offered to him, that generates a free willingness. There's a chart that kind of explores this a little bit. Um, I believe that might be, there you go. A uh, whole heart that leads to a free offering leads to this, this internal interest. And that's what God is looking for in gifts. So if you're not yet prepared to give that freely, for whatever reason, if you're new, there's zero obligation or interest for you to give. We want everyone to give as they would by first cultivating a whole heart worship, leading to a freedom, a desire. And that whole heart with free gifts, again, not compulsory, not obligatory, leads to joy. And all of this in an environment of enormous grace from God that's reaching into our hearts, that's helping us receive this impulse of, of generosity, responding to him that leads to satisfaction and joy because we've taken what he's given us and we've offered it back to him. What a privilege. Grace upon grace upon grace. And it's that experience that is tremendously thrilling and joy-inducing. And we've seen it so many times before and we know that God is going to do this all over again. Generosity promotes joy as grace is multiplied in the lives of those that see him and experience him and freely offer and receive grace back to them, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. See, friends, our generosity is not so much about us impoverishing ourselves to give to God as if he needs anything. He doesn't need anything. It's the privilege in sharing with the generous God that always outgives. Always. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Dr. David Livingston was 
an explorer, a Christian missionary who spent most of his life, all of his adult life, in the interior of Africa. Moving from the south all the way up into the middle of Africa was the first white person to see Lake Victoria. An extraordinary adventurer of world-class renown. He was a missionary expanding the cause of Jesus Christ. And his life was filled with horrible suffering. Losing family members and friends left and right in the horrible conditions and under which he served. He was deprived greatly. He was attacked at one point by a tiger, physically almost died, was attacked by tribes as he tried to reach them for the gospel, suffered deeply. Toward the end of his life, he was asked, so Dr. Livingston, tell us, uh, you've sacrificed so much, you've given so much, you have suffered in so many ways. Tell us, was it worth it? And here's his beautiful response. People talk of the sacrifices that I have made in spending my life, so much of it in Africa. Can that be called a sacrifice that is simply acknowledging a great debt that we owe to our God, which we can never repay? Is that a sacrifice which brings its own reward in healthful activity, the consciousness of doing good, the peace of mind, and a bright hope of a glorious destiny? It is emphatically no sacrifice at all. Rather, it is a privilege. Anxiety, sickness, suffering, danger, foregoing the common conveniences of this life, these may make us pause and cause our weak spirits to waver and our souls to sink in moments of despair. But let that only be for a moment. All these are nothing to be compared with the glory which shall later be revealed in us and through us. I have never made a sacrifice. Of this we ought not to talk when we remember of the greatest sacrifice which he made who left his father's throne on high to give himself for sinners like me. And I reflect again on my dear friend Dwight who gave beyond reason, beyond rationale, so that people who have not heard the name of Jesus Christ could hear and know, repent, and believe. And that, my friends, is a life of true joy. Lord, it is a counterintuitive and countercultural message To show people in your word how generosity promotes joy, but it's true. And we receive your upside down truth and recognize that that's the way so much of the gospel is. The way down is the way up. The way to riches is the way of generosity. And the way to glory is the path of the cross and so we receive from your hand and we are grateful for your kindness your goodness we want to return it fully and with our whole hearts in a free will offering for great joy and gladness we pray in jesus name amen